Hello, hello, hello. It's Jackie Schaumburg Minen, and I am back at it with these 12 by 12 canvases. I'm working on abstract landscapes across 10 of these canvases. And this is the third installment. Um, as I put these on the shelf for months at a time and then take them out and work on them and try to keep you guys up to date whenever there's something to show. So I've been adding more layers to these this weekend. And it has been, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I've made some decisions I love, which like this fluorescent red that I'm adding. Uh, loving the vibrance that this brings. Uh, I've made a couple choices that I'm <laughs> less excited about, as you'll see as we continue to go in this video. Um, but overall, I'm excited about the changes that are taking place. I'm trying not to overthink because I really, really, really love the color palette that's happening right now with these like, you know, juicy pinks and maroons and then the neutrals that, I don't know, it all feels, it just feels really, really nice. <laughs> that nice is the worst word I could have chosen. Um, it doesn't feel super excited, happy, but it feels very com comfort, comfortable makes me feel like sweatpants. <laughs> this is definitely elevated over sweatpants. What word, if you guys can let me know what word you think of when you think of this color palette in the comments, you'd really be helping me out because clearly I cannot think of my own. But there's something like familiar, but fresh, but um, cozy. I don't know. Help me out, guys. What do you, what words do you uh, think of when you're thinking of these colors together in this, uh, these particular canvases? Excuse my voice. I sound a little bit like a classic uh, rock DJ right now. I have a sinus infection. Hooray. Um, but I will be better. And I wanted to do a live version of this, but there's a lot of coughing happening. And I figured that that would be not at all uh, desirable for you guys to listen to me cough every once in a while. So recording it is. So it's been mostly warm colors and neutrals. I decided I would add, this is thalo turquoise mixed with some white, which creates a light blue that's, uh, I'm gonna use the word vibrant again. It's not like a baby blue where it feels like, I don't know. I don't know how to say it without being judgy. I don't really love baby blue. Um, it's a, definitely a light blue but it, it's a little bit punchier. How's that? There's a little bit more oomph behind it. At least I think so. And since I'm the one making it, <laughs> that's what matters in this right now. I try to take each canvas as it comes. So I'm going from one canvas to the next, not thinking, well, try not to think too much in between, and there were definitely cases where I had no idea what to do. So I was focused on doing something. And here I'm using the edge of a broken paintbrush that just has the, <laughs> the handle to scrape into the blue to mimic that netting texture. And my goal here isn't to make something pretty as I add these layers. My goal is to put some of the color on each canvas. I'm trying to keep things simple and not get in my head too much. Um, sometimes I succeed, you know, in doing that over other times, but that's, my goal as I'm going along. And you'll, you'll notice that as I'm adding paint, 
sometimes I do add it in the same general place, right? Like I've noticed even just watching this again, that I've tended to add this blue about a third of the way down from the top of the um, landscape canvas. Um, but sometimes I'm wiping it away with paper towel. Sometimes I'm making it bigger, like here I'm making it a bit bigger, not such, such a thin line. So even in the familiar areas where I am adding things in similar places, I'm still trying to make it different somehow. And this just adds to, you know, the interest of people looking at more than one canvas. And hopefully within the same canvas as well. Not loving this blue that I just put on there. It doesn't feel very confident. It's getting a little better. And there are some pieces that as I go, you'll potentially notice that some of them are missing as I add other colors going forward. So every panel, excuse me, every canvas did get this light blue on it. But in a few moments, I will be adding two more colors and not every canvas received those two colors. I'm not sure how I feel about scraping the paint away to mimic that netting collage piece, but it's something different. And my goal is just to put the paint on and keep doing things in different ways. So by those rules, I am succeeding. I find that it's, I'm trying to think of who I learned this from. I'm sure it's an amalgamation of a couple people, but probably Louise Fletcher or Alice Sheridan that, you know, if you set out to make, you know, make a pretty painting, <laughs> that's really subjective and how do you know if you've ever finished that right um that could take you a lifetime to do to your standard of what you think is pretty but if you set out to make something that has you know six colors and you're practicing a grid composition style okay so you can do that and achieve that goal whether or not the painting is pretty so if you set out to do something very specific that's measurable and it's objective, right? Yes, I practiced this composition style. Great. Yes, I used these six colors that I was aiming to use to see how they would work. Great. That's what I'm trying to get myself to do. And it's definitely a, a paradigm shift because, right, I think deep down, everyone would like to make a beautiful painting every time they sit down or a whatever painting that you're into, right? A shocking one, a bold one, a, you know, I don't know, a soft one. But those are all very subjective. I'm adding pyrrole orange here to many of the canvases, but not all of them, I don't believe. So the more specific you can get with the objective of your art, the easier it is to, to say, okay, I've finished this because my task was to do a grid composition using these six colors. You know, alternatively, you could always say, I want to experiment with how to, you know, orange and blue relate to each other. So I'm going to make, you know, 12 canvases with orange and blues. And again, as you've finished painting with orange and blue on them, um, you will be able to cross things off your list that are, you've achieved when you're not using something like, I want to make, you know, seven gorgeous paintings using blue and orange, because who's to say what's gorgeous? Ultimately, you as the artist are, but does it hopefully you get what I'm saying about how it's very different to say, I want to make beautiful art. I want to make six beautiful paintings over. I want to make six paintings using, 
this type of composition style. You give yourself an assignment, basically. Anyone can finish that assignment. Not everyone can make a gorgeous painting. But often, you may find that as you're going through your assignment, you'll find a way to make it beautiful or to your taste and to your liking. So I have mixed feelings about adding this Payne's Gray. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say besides that. I have very mixed feelings. Some of them, I think it looks great, or at least looks interesting. And some of the, the canvases, I think, Jackie, why? Why did you do that? Everything was light and breezy and then you added this huge dark heavy color but alas this is what I did <laughs> and I certainly needed I, I wanted some more contrast so I definitely have achieved that the application of the Payne's gray if I'm going to be harsh with myself or critical anyway I did better in some of these canvases than others. I was experimenting and I ended up experimenting in ways with results that I didn't love. But again, it's only paint and these are only layers and I can always paint over things. So in summary, I'm glad I have the different values and this darker value. And I do like how that looks with the Payne's Gray fading away from that harsher line, more distinct line. I do wish that I had just left these things alone and not tried to thin them out so much. But, you know, see, I wish I'd left it like that. This is me trying to get some drips. Actually, I don't mind that one so much. So, depending, uh, some of these canvases have a lot more going on than others. This does not have a lot going on, which I appreciate. The detail and the contrast is kind of all up in that top third of the painting and there's much more subtle details happening below that line and above that line for that matter so i enjoy the paintings that are going this direction this this one tends to have a lot more happening all around the canvas which is not good or bad uh, you know in itself um, but it does make me want to go quiet some more things down. Which I will do at a later time. I'm just scraping through that dark blue. I really do love Payne's Gray. It's just the particular application that I'm using here in the, in this particular color palette. I still like the color with all these other colors. It's just so bold compared to where everything else was a bit softer from a contrast perspective that I've completely obliterated by adding the Payne's Gray. I don't know that I regret it, but I'm still getting used to it because it's such a big change. These are, you know, FYI, these are the museum thickness, which I think is two and a half inches, maybe, maybe three inches thick. In case you were wondering,
in this canvas in particular has so much going on everywhere and my brain doesn't know what to do with it. This is probably my least favorite of the bunch right now. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this, one, this one is the one that I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. So we'll have to see. I wasn't thrilled with that. So this is where they are now, you guys. This is... 10 paintings, their third round of layers and revisions and colors added. Overall, I'm very happy with them. There are just a few that I need to get used to and make some more layers on. So again, let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments what description you would use for how these paintings feel to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you subscribed and hit the little bell so you get notified when I make new videos. Bye!